Hello there, friends in Christ. Welcome to the Word of Grace and to another study of the key words of Scripture. One of the most mysterious beings in all of Holy Writ is that amazing person called the Angel of the Lord throughout the pages of the Old Testament. He is also known by other titles such as My Angel or The Angel Who Redeemed Me as well as the messenger of the covenant. Yet wherever this most unusual personage makes his sudden appearance, he inevitably betrays by either word or action his real identity. It has been the consistent view of sound Bible scholars for generations that the angel of the Lord is a title used to veil thinly a genuine theophany or shining forth of Jehovah himself. It is also to be noted that his appearances are consistently related to the Shekinah, that amazing phenomena which serves as the chariot of God when he descends from heaven or ascends from the earth. Having said these things, let us turn to the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit illumine our hearts concerning the divine messenger as we open our hearts to his truth without reservation. The place of first reference in the Bible for the name, the angel of the Lord, or Jehovah, is Genesis 16, 7. Here we find Hagar, the slave girl of the wife of Abram, in the desert wilderness by a spring. She is heavy with child of the patriarch, and a runaway from his tent because of the abuse of Sarai, the wife of Abram, who is chagrined because she is not able to bear him an heir. We are told that the angel of the Lord found her in a despondent state and commanded her to return to her mistress and place herself in subjection to authority. Then he explained that she was to give birth to a boy, who was to be given the name Ishmael. Furthermore, the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed, that is, Ishmael, exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Now observe, the divine messenger does not say, God will multiply, he says, I will multiply. He is no ordinary message bearer who speaks in the name of another, and in the absence of that other. He does not speak like Jehovah's servants, the prophets, Thus saith the Lord, he declares that he himself will multiply the descendants of Ishmael to such an extent that it will be an impossibility to number them. Well, of course, this promise has already been fulfilled quite literally in the Arab nations who are the modern seed of Ishmael with Abraham as their father. Having made careful note of the fact that the angel of the Lord himself declares that he has ordained Ishmael's history in advance, in terms of billions of descendants, we observe something else in the following chapter. Abraham is promised that he will have a son by his aged wife Sarah, and that the everlasting covenant will be established through him and not through Ishmael, the bond slave's son. Then, speaking in the past tense of an act already accomplished, God speaks to the venerable Abraham, saying, And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have already blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him. Now observe, here it is God who says, I will multiply Ishmael. Therefore we ask, Now just who is guaranteeing that Ishmael will not be sterile, but will have a huge multitude of descendants? In chapter 16, we are told that the guarantor is the angel of the Lord. And in the 17th chapter, it is recorded that the guarantor is God. The answer is, the angel of the Lord is none other than God himself disguised in human form. Now, as the conversation between God and the patriarch is concluded, a most unusual phenomena is recorded, for we are told, God went up from Abraham. Now, there are no details as to how he went up from Abraham, 
we are simply informed that God ascended from his earthly presence. Now this phrase of ascension, like its counterpart, God came down, speaks of the coming and going of the glory cloud or the Shekinah. In fact, at a much later date, our dear Lord Jesus identified himself as this divine resident of the Shekinah glory by insisting that it was he who came down from heaven to speak to the holy prophets and other descendants of Abraham. Furthermore, this same messenger of Jehovah or angel of the Lord, who is constantly identified as God in person, will one day come in the same cloud of his glory to resurrect all men from the dead, that their works might be judged, the elect cleansed as by fire and raptured into glory, and the non-elect cast into the lake of fire and torment forever and ever. Then in the twenty-second chapter of Genesis, we meet the angel of the Lord once again. His sudden appearance on this occasion is to deal with Abraham, who is obediently offering up his beloved son as a sacrifice, according to the command of God. On this occasion we are told, The angel of the Lord called to Abram out of heaven. Now here we must observe the fact that heaven and the Shekinah glory are synonymous in the Hebrew Old Testament. You can see that for yourself by looking at Exodus chapter 20, verses 18 through 22. As the venerable patriarch looked upward, he beheld a ram caught in a thorn bush. This male lamb, a Semitic symbol for Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, was then offered as a substitute in place of Isaac. Abraham, of course, knew who the heavenly messenger was, for he gives the place of his appearing a special name, Yahweh Yira, which means Jehovah will provide. This name was Abraham's testimony to the fulfillment of the promise of God which Abraham had proclaimed to Isaac. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. It is God also who is spoken of as the angel of the Lord, who provides that substitute. The messenger of Jehovah is none other than Jehovah himself. Now whenever God declares or reconfirms a covenant, he appears in the midst of his flaming angelic host as the messenger of Jehovah. This messenger of the covenant, or angel of the covenant, as he is called in Malachi, is next seen appearing to the son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham. The father of the Hebrew nation's grandson, Jacob, is found by the angel of Jehovah at Haran, where he had fled from the wrath of Esau. We are told that the Lord commanded Jacob to return to the land of his ancestors, after multiplying his herds in spite of the rascality of Laban, Jacob's father-in-law. And in a dream in which the now aging, fugitive from Esau, was watching spotted, speckled, and striped flocks of sheep, we are told that the angel of God, that is, the messenger of God, appeared. After assuring Jacob that he knew what harsh treatment he had received from Laban, the angel of the Lord says, I am the God of Bethel. Now observe. The angel of God does not say, Thus saith the Lord, as did the holy prophets when they spoke for Jehovah. No, in impossible to misunderstand terms, the angel of God says quite bluntly and plainly, I am the God of Bethel. In other words, the angel of God is himself God. As we shall see, this messenger of Jehovah is God the Son, the pre-incarnate second person of the Blessed Trinity. Now, furthermore, this reference to Bethel identifies the angel of God as the radiant resident of the Shekinah. It was at Bethel that this man, who was the father of the twelve tribes, had his dream of the angels of God ascending and descending a ladder, connecting earth to heaven and heaven to earth. This so-called Jacob's Ladder is a Semitic symbol for the Shekinah, or pillar of fire, in which the messenger of God comes down from heaven and returns to heaven. 
Now, our blessed Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, identifies himself as the ladder or connecting way between earth and heaven when he tells Nathanael, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven, that is, the Shekinah, open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Son of Man is the ladder. Whenever the Son of Man, who is none other than the Son of God, who is none other than the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament narratives, descends to reveal the Father, he is always surrounded by those angelic spirits who are his, quote, ministers of fire, end of quote, as in Hebrews 1.7. As Jacob saw the vision of the pillar of fire in his dream, it appeared as though the flaming angels were moving up and down a ladder with the Lord God Jehovah standing on it. Now the blessed Son is the connecting link between man and God. He is the way into the presence of God, for he is the gate of heaven, as Jacob called it, as he named the place, Beth El, or the house of Elohim. Again we see that the angel of God is none other than God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ in his pre-incarnate state. In Jacob's prophetic blessing of his sons, the father of the twelve tribes of Israel describes the resident of the Shekinah as the angel who redeemed me from all evil. We next meet the messenger of Jehovah in an appearance to Moses. The latter is serving as a shepherd for his father-in-law, Jethro, and his flock is in the area of Mount Horeb, which is also called Mount Sinai. Suddenly, he saw an amazing phenomena, a dry desert bush all ablaze with fire without being consumed. We are told, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Moses in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. But next we are told that the speaker from within the flames is actually God. In fact, the angel of the Lord declares, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Had Moses been born anything but a Hebrew, he would never have had the privilege of viewing the Shekinah, which is precisely what is being described in the burning bush passage in Exodus. And this is why the Apostle Paul states in his epistle to the Romans, as he speaks of Israel, to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants. The glory, of course, is a Bible name for the Shekinah, or pillar of fire, which is also called the cloud. This phenomena is the throne room of heaven itself. As the divine messenger continues to speak, he further identifies himself by the wondrous title, I am that I am, which is to say that he is the one who has always existed, does now exist, and ever shall exist. This is to say that the angel of the Lord is another title for the eternal God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When Isaiah sings of the salvation of Israel from the hands of Pharaoh because of the promises of God to Abraham, telling of the precious way that the people of God were redeemed by the angel of his presence, he says, In all their tribulation he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and his pity he redeemed them. The angel, or messenger, who was with Israel when the firstborn were redeemed by the blood of the Passover lamb, and when the nation was saved at the Red Sea, was the resident of the pillar of fire, or Shekinah, which is the throne room of God. He placed his cloud of the angelic hosts between the Egyptians and Israel, making it utter darkness to the unbelieving pagans who pursued, but light to the people of God. They walked in the light. As Israel is seen journeying through the wilderness wastes of the desert of Arabia, the august being called the angel of the Lord appears again and again as a sort of 
Captain of the Lord's Hosts. We are told two things about the resident of the Shekinah, which proves our point, that the angel of the Lord is actually Jehovah in human form, that is, the eternal Son of God, manifest in human form before His actual incarnation. Describing their wilderness marches, the book of Exodus records that, The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. Yet in the very following chapter, we are told that it was the angel of God who went before the children of Israel as they journeyed. In the one chapter, it says Jehovah went before them. In the next chapter, speaking of the same incident, it says that God went before them. You see, the witnesses agree that this divine messenger is none other than God himself, showing forth his glory through the radiant form of the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus in his pre-incarnate state. And this is easily compared with Ezekiel 128. Now, during the times of the judges, these were military heroes who ruled and judged Israel. They were great generals of Israel. The messenger of Jehovah appeared from time to time in his chariot of fiery glory. There is the surprise appearance to Gideon, when God wishes to advise him that he has been chosen to be a general of the Israeli army. Later on, the angel of the Lord made an appearance to the parents of the mighty Samson at a time previous to his birth. And as the story progresses in Judges 13, we discover Manoah, the father of Samson, offering a kid from his flock as a sacrifice to his heavenly visitor. The angel of the Lord informs Manoah that he should offer sacrifices to Jehovah, for Samson's father was not yet aware of the true identity of this divine messenger. Finally, the sacrifice is permitted to be offered upon a rock, a rock altar, and the startling statement is made that the angel of the Lord did wondrously. Just what this wondrous act was is seen to be related to consuming the sacrifice from the Shekinah. For we read, When the flame went upward toward heaven from off the altar, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. Now Manoah knew who the heavenly visitor was, for he was an Israelite who had heard all about the angel of the Lord, who is the resident of the flaming pillar of fire. So when he sees the messenger of Jehovah ascend into heaven in the flames, he cries to his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. Whom had they seen? They had seen the angel of the Lord in the midst of the Shekinah glory. They had seen God manifest in human form. They had seen the second person of the Holy Trinity. They had seen the pre-incarnate Son of God. Now, not only did the angel of the Lord appear to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and Israel, but also to the holy prophets of that nation. Sometimes he is called the Word of the Lord, as he speaks from the throne of his glory in the Shekinah, and at other times he is simply described in terms which identify who he really is. In the prophecy of Daniel, he is described as the Son of Man who keeps Shadrach Meshach, and Abednego from harm in the fiery furnace, or as the one who receives an everlasting kingdom from the Ancient of Days. He is no created being. He is no ordinary angel. And we must remember that angel simply means messenger. In the prophecy of Ezekiel, the radiant resident of the Shekinah is described in a fabulous way. First of all, the prophet tells of his first view of the Shekinah near the Chibar Canal on Babylon, declaring that the heavens were opened and that his vision was a vision of God. Ezekiel writes, I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, a fire enfolding itself. As his description continues, we see flaming angelic beings racing up and down a theophany as though ascending and descending a ladder. 
And when the prophet finally describes the resident of the flaming whirlwind or the fiery cloud enfolding itself, he says that it was the likeness of the glory of the Lord. That's Ezekiel 128. The platform of the throne is the color of a sapphire stone, the color of the vault of heaven itself. This immediately clues the reader to the fact that this blazing cloud with its radiant resident is the same as the pillar of fire indwelt by Jehovah upon the top of Mount Sinai at the giving of the law, because on that occasion Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, quote, saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. Now, since Ezekiel repeats the same details, it is apparent that the resident of his cloud of glory is the same as that viewed at Mount Sinai by Moses and the children of Israel. That resident is declared to be both the God of Israel and the angel of the Lord. We must conclude, therefore, that this mysterious person who resides in glory and is called the angel of the Lord throughout the Old Testament is none other than Jehovah manifest in human form. The angel of God is the pre-incarnate second person of the Holy Trinity, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we view this title, the angel of the Lord, one of the most mysterious beings of Holy Writ, we discover that he is actually God himself manifest in a human form. This was made clear to us as we observed that when he spoke to Hagar about the multiplying of the seed of Ishmael so that it could not be numbered for multitude, we see that first of all it says the angel of God spoke to her. And he does not say, Thus saith the Lord, God is going to multiply your seed. He says, I will multiply thy seed. Then later we are told that it is God who says he will multiply the seed. Therefore, the angel of the Lord is God. Things equal to the same thing are equal to each other. And then you'll remember how the angel of the Lord appeared to Abraham when he was ninety-nine years old, and says that he will indeed multiply Ishmael. And as he says, I will make him fruitful and will multiply him, he identifies himself as the angel of the Lord. We're reminded that the angel of the Lord is said to have gone up from Abram, which, of course, speaks of the fact that he left in the cloud of the glory. You remember that in the book of Acts, the two angels, or two messengers of God, in their white raiment, said to those who were gazing up into heaven, This same Jesus shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. We are told that he was caught up in the clouds. Those were not fleecy white water clouds. Those clouds speak of the Shekinah glory, which is the chariot of God, which is the pillar of fire, which is the cloud of the glory. It has many titles, but it speaks of the throne room of heaven. And so, when we find that the uh, patriarch Abraham is offering Isaac, it says that the angel of the Lord called to Abraham out of heaven. And yet we discover by reading on that it is God who speaks with Abraham from heaven. Therefore, they are identified as the same being. The angel of the Lord is none other than Jehovah himself. And of course, when that angel of the Lord spoke to Jacob and said, I am the God of Bethel, he identifies himself as Jehovah because Jehovah is El, or Elohim, and he is the one who appeared to Jacob. So therefore, again, it was stressed that the angel of the Lord and Jehovah are one and the same person. And of course, again, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in the burning bush, in chapter 3 of Exodus and verse 2, 
it is the angel of the Lord who speaks out of the flame. But in verse 6, it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the angel of the Lord, and Jehovah himself are one and the same person. But when Jehovah manifests himself in a human form, it is Jehovah the Son, the second person of the Holy Trinity. He is the angel of the Lord, or messenger of Jehovah. He is the one who speaks for God as God.